YouTube, what is good? Matt Kennedy here. Today we're making a video going over the Jadavian Clowney phenomena. Hopefully coming to Cleveland, man. I am so excited. Um, I did say before, and I know one of my subs, Julian Bolt, Julian Bolt, did point it out. I did say he was a bust, and I'm going to still go ahead and believe that. Only because of his injuries. I don't really think that he's been in the field enough to prove himself as a long-term player for success. You know, I can see the argument for him not being a bust. You know, he had what? Two, three Pro Bowls in a row with Houston. He, you know, along with J.J. Watt and Whitney Marcellius and A.J. Boye. And, you know, one year as Vince Wilfork was there. He did lead the Texans to two, three years of playoffs. But you have to realize, you know, he led, he led Seattle to the playoffs. And then they lost, uh, I believe, to Green Bay or whatever, I think like two years ago. I mean, honestly, dude, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, if we signed Davian Clowney, just from the thought of it, I would probably give it an 8. An 8 out of 10. It's going to be a 10 out of 10 if we sign him cheap. So what I mean by that is the Cleveland Browns have 14 point, uh, uh, according to uh, according to a reporter on Twitter, the Browns have 14.8 mil in cap. Cap space, you know, cap room, right? 7, 8 million go to rookies. We only have 7 million in cap. So if Clowney signs a deal for under 10 mil, I mean, it's a huge W. The Tennessee Titans paid him almost like 20 mil or like 15, 15, 16 mil. So if the Browns were able to get Clowney for either a multi-year deal for, you know, 10 mil a year or, you know, 7 mil for one year, hell, 5 mil, for a make it or break it year, guys, you have to realize one thing. I can't promise you Clowney will be the next, you know, pro bowler again. I can't promise you that he'll lead us to a Super Bowl. I can't promise you that he will have a phenomenal year. But what I will promise you is he will try his hardest to stay on that field and same with same with uh, same with Tarkerist McKinley, who was a DN we signed four and a half mil. I want to say four and a half mil. We signed Tarkerist McKinley to a four and a half million dollar contract one year. He may be a backup DN now. So Jadavian Clowney, if we get him, obviously, you know, he's gonna be on probably a make it or break it deal. I mean, the guy's only 29 years old. Either 28, 29, or he's not 30. He's probably 28, 29, right? He's not that old. I mean, this guy still needs money for his future, probably. I mean, there's no way he invested it perfectly, right? You know, this guy literally probably needs, you know, he wants another big contract. So if he sucks for us, that's his problem. You know, yeah, I said he was a bust, but it doesn't mean I don't believe in him. You know, I say it all the time on my Madden Gaming here. You know, I play Madden Gaming here on my channel. You know, shout out to my DNs. You know, Michael Strahan, Javon Kurst, you know, John Randall and uh, Lori Glover. You know, I've seen good things. So when they suck, I'm like, What? I've seen you do good things. Where are those good things? So for Jadavian Clowney, you know, yeah, he's not, you know, um, you know, like a Miles Garrett probably. He's not consistent, you know. Yeah, he's not going to be, you know, Aaron Donald. He's not going to give you, you know, you know, all these sacks. You know, maybe he will. But is that really what he's been recently? No. 
in his prime in Houston, he was a top 10 pass rusher. Even Khalil Mack has kind of dropped off his last two years, Khalil Mack. You know, where has he been since that 2008 double doink season? You know, where has he been since that, his last two years? It's almost been non-existent. Now, of course, the Chicago, the Chicago Bears offense has kind of been bad. Maybe, maybe the motivation's not there, but nevertheless, um, I think overall, Javion Clowney, there is no doubt, no doubt, he would help our team. He not only brings energy for the people around him, but when you look at the holes for the Cleveland Browns team, it's the pass rush. You literally, from last year, also a secondary, well, the whole defense, honestly. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. The whole defense is banged up, dude. Um, no, obviously, not all, not all you guys are Browns fans. You're not, you're not going to know all these players. But Grant Delpit was out from the preseason. Grant Delpit from LSU, the hard hitter, he's, he's coming back. He's literally coming back. So we need Grant Delpit. That's literally automatically a better defense. Even if he's not a superstar, it's still depth, right? We then add, hopefully, Jadavian Clowney. Tomorrow, we may reach a deal. And by the way, I want to point out real quick, it is not official. So if anyone in the comments say, you know, it's not official, you know, I know it's not official. I'm reacting to them possibly signing you know, if they sign him, how will I react? Right here. We will get a specific video possibly tomorrow. But the thing is, though, is I feel like if we sign him and we have him and Miles Garrett, I mean, that is pretty powerful. When you have someone that can be a compliment with as good as Miles Garrett with Clowney. I mean, yeah, our DTs aren't, you know, Fletcher Cox or, you know, it's not something like Aaron Donald. But, I mean, we still have Sheldon Richardson and Malik Jackson, who are literally run stuffers. That's their job. A DT is not really known to get sacks, but Aaron Donald makes it look easy. The ends are really supposed to get those the pressure and the DTs just clog some shit. I think really in all reality, if we get Jadavian Clowney, we, you know, we already got John Johnson and Anthony Walker. I mean, this defense is already revamped. And it's just like, not to mention Greedy Williams, you better hope he's not a bust. He kind of already is a bust, but... I mean, he has two years in. He has no no picks. He barely has any deflection. As if anything, he got burnt, burnt more than he did good on deep balls. So notice how I'm not talking about the offense because we know the offense of Cleveland can do great things. We have coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. We know he's a great offensive-minded coach. I mean, how many first-year head coaches with a young quarterback and, you know, overall a young team? I mean, the oldest starter for us was 29 years old, J.C. Treader. I think Shell and Richardson was 29, 30, but we literally have nobody above 30 years old on our team. That, by definition, is a young team. Hell, there's a team that has a 45-year-old, Tom Brady. Right? Or is, he, or is he 44? Like, whatever, dude. I mean, he's still an old head. Like, literally, it's just Baker Mayfield, according, according to ESPN rankings, it was either ESPN or CBS, he's literally the 11th best quarterback going into this year. He is the 11th best. Okay. He's the 11th best. That's fine. It's not great. It's not bad. But when you add Kareem Hunt... Nick Chubb, two top 15 halfbacks, right? Should be two top 10, but like some fucker's going to give Kareem Hunt like number 15, so whatever. Um, So two top 15 halfbacks. We literally have a great overall 
I'm not saying that Odell is top five or Landry's top five, but I'm saying overall, when you have Landry, Higgins, and you have um, Odell Beckham, not to mention Donovan Peoples-Jones, I want to say a six-rounder from Michigan or a fifth-rounder. He's our fourth receiver. We have three tight ends, Najoku, Hooper, and then, I mean, you know, Harrison is kind of like young and stuff, but one of the best O-lines in the league. I mean, it's just like the offense overall is a top five offense in the league on paper. And we've shown it last year in the offseason, um, excuse me, the playoffs, by, you know, I know Higgins fumbled, H- you know, Higgins fumbled, but he still caught great balls for us. He's still trying to make plays. I respect him. You know, yeah, he fumbled, but Sorensen had an illegal hit. I'm not going to call it an excuse. I'm just saying, why are you blaming Higgins? Higgins is trying to make a play. Good for him. He's giving 110% of her. God bless you. That's exactly what I want to see for National Cleveland Browns. I want to see everyone work together. Not have Divas and Odell and Baker taking over. The, you know, it's brotherhood. We're brothers and sisters. You know, you know if we have females on the coaching, coaching staff. You know, we're brothers and sisters here in Cleveland. And we need to work together for one goal to get a Super Bowl for us loyal fans. I was born and raised outside of Cleveland, Ohio, in a suburb. And I'm ready to go out there and prove to the world that Cleveland Browns football is legit. And I told people many, many times, it is so funny how the Browns four years ago, four years ago, were 0-16. And they were the worst team in football. And then now, going into five years later, 2021, we're literally a top three team on paper. Isn't that funny? That's what good drafting does. That's what a good uh, office work does, a good GM. That's what good coaching does. We finally got a good coach. And that's what happens when you're a bad team. You get good draft picks. Denzel Ward, Baker Mayfield, Miles Garrett, Nick Chubb. It's all coming together. That's exactly, that's like saying the Jacksonville Jaguars will be a top three team in four years. Can you see it happening? That's like the Detroit Lions being a top four team. I don't see it. That's like the New York Jets with no quarterback right now being a top team in four years. The fact that the Cleveland Browns had, this is their starting lineup. Deshaun Kaiser, quarterback. Isaiah Crowell, running back. Tight end, Seth DeVal. Wide receiver, Ricardo Lewis. Wide receiver, Kenny Britt. The best linemen, I think we had like two of them. Jarrell Batonio and Joe Thomas. That's it. We had no center, no guard. I, th- I think our tackle was like a, like a third string. I mean, literally, it was cringe. Our defense had no ward. I want to say that we did have Miles Garrett for the 0-16 season. But we had nobody. We had nobody on that team. And it's just like, it's just, it's funny to me. It's funny how we were literally a joke four years ago. And now we're one of the best teams in the league. It's one of the best stories of all time I can think of. I mean, sure, there's other great stories, you know, MLB, NBA, you know, there's, there's, there's so many great stories. But to think about how we go from the dead worst team to one game away from the AFC Championship, really one drive away, one drive away, but Baker Mayfield couldn't drive us. It, it's fine. I mean, he's still young. But Clowney, though, I, I, I really think the offense is there. The coach is there. We need help on defense. Grant Delpit, John Johnson, Troy Hill, Jadavion Clowney, Anthony Walker. We still have the draft. We still have a top 25 pick to get a great defensive stud in the first round. There's so many quarterbacks, Mac Jones, so many receivers, Waddle, uh, uh, Smith, right? 
I mean, we literally have so many receivers. We, we have a tight end, Kyle Pitts. We have offensive linemen, Sewell. You know, quarterbacks like Lawrence Fields. There will be some defensive defensive players that drop. And once those defensive players drop, you know, Mika Parsons, uh, um, cornerback Sertain, those guys might not drop to 20, but they might drop to number 10, number 12. And that means other players that are defensive, they might drop even more. So it's just like, I hope we get a, like, it's all defense. Our defense was literally the dead average defense. I wouldn't say bad. I wouldn't say good. It was average. We made plays as a team when we needed it. Miles Garrett, other bullshit. But when you add some pieces, John Johnson, Davian Clowney, you know, uh, Grant Delpit, it could easily go from average to good. And if Clowney plays like Houston days, great. Because trust me, when you have Garrett and Clowney, it's, it's going to be tough. Just like Watt and Clowney, right? Because Garrett is now in his prime. This, this is his fourth year coming up. Right? Wait, no. Fifth year. This is his fifth year Fifth year coming up. Time flies, right? Time flies. Jeez. Um, so this is like his middle time, so it would be his prime. Bye, guys. Take care, and hopefully we've got Super Bowl next year.